Hello and welcome to this week's edition of True Audio Files. Today I'm going to talk about a kind of a public service announcement of sorts. Uh, and basically it's about how not to get burned by Record Store Day releases. And how I have been burned again. Uh, even after knowing that uh, these issues um, happen. And what I mean by that is if you've watched any of my videos, especially my... Record Store Day, Vinyl Halls, uh, you'll know that I usually tell people what I typically avoid when it comes to Record Store Day. And what I typically tend to ignore, or not ignore, but tend to try to shy away from or stay away from, is picture discs and live recordings, and more, more specifically, live recordings that are you know previously unreleased or rare recordings and generally speaking my experience has been with very rare exception um, that those releases tend to not sound very good and can be kind of a hard listen so that being said <laughs> it happened again to me this time around although there were some weird interesting twists to this story and that is live recordings from record store day releases and I've got three examples here that I'll give you from this year's Record Store Day releases that I have not been very happy with. And I know that there have been some other people who have been uh, voicing their displeasure with at least one of the other one, of the ones that are here. So, But let me go over these. But the key thing here is I always say, unless you're a huge, huge fan of the artist and they're releasing a previously unreleased rare, never-before-heard live recording on vinyl for Record Store Day, you're probably better off leaving it alone and keeping away from it because it's nine times out of ten that I've listened to these, they have not been good. The only ones that I've experienced that tend to be good are you know, maybe ones that started out being like a single record and they expanded it or ones that may have been like TV show specials that previously, uh, or they were ha um, things that you know were recorded and intended to be released, uh, and and maybe were extras uh, stuff that they just didn't put onto the original records, things like that. But overall, my experience has been that they're usually not very good. <laughs> so the first one I'm going to start off with is one, the one that was kind of a, a little bit of a surprise to me because I know that it was a reissue of a previously released live recording. And it was a relatively, you know, I think it was from like the late 60s or early 70s. And unfortunately, I don't have my glasses on with me. But, uh, oh, actually, this, yeah, 1966. So this is Blues is King, B.B. King, Don't Answer the Door. A um, couple things that kind of upset me about it. One is... The first maybe track or two of side one have a bunch of either, you know, tape dropouts and terrible repairs where they tried to maybe splice in uh, other copies of the the recording. And there's just the EQs are not are not uh, basically normalized in terms of where, you know, you hear one recording and then the next one is, is much brighter and then they go back goes back to well, not quite as bright and things on that nature and not only that but uh they claim that it's stereo and i'll show you the the front cover but you know maybe i didn't pay enough attention to to it and listen to it enough but as you can see it says stereo right there but it did not sound like there was any kind of stereo whatsoever it definitely sounded like it was a mono recording so you know i don't know you know, maybe I missed the, where there was stereo, but I heard no stereo separation whatsoever, whether it was the crowd or the instrumentation or the vocals or, or any of that stuff. It all sounded like it was coming right straight down the middle. So that one was kind of a disappointment to me. This one, next one, is one that's been a disappointment to a lot of people that I've been seeing on social media commenting on it. And, uh, you know, if I, I don't know how most of you do record store day shopping, but generally speaking, I know I do this, and I know a lot of people that do. You know, you tend to maybe wait for, you know, in line for records, and you 
either go in right away and pick out what you want and then go to the cash register or checkout or where I go, uh, I actually give them a checklist and they pull the records I want so I can just go right to the cash register when it's time to check out. But either way, you generally don't have enough time to really study the release and look at it. And if there's not enough information on any sites in regards to these things, uh, you can definitely miss some of the stuff. And what I'm talking about specifically is the Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers uh, Jazz Workshop 1970 uh, recording. And the biggest thing about this one is there's a lot of distortion on this. You know, except for the distortion, actually, it sounded decent, but there was just way too much distortion, especially on the vocals. And there was a, there were a lot of vocals on here, but just overall, there was a lot of distortion. And they, at least I have to admit that, uh, and I don't know if you're going to be able to read it, but it does give a note right here talking about, you know, that it's a lo-fi recording and they tried everything they could to restore it, but uh, they felt that it was a, an important recording to have uh, to release. I've listened to it and if you take the distortion away, it's definitely enjoyable. I would not personally go as far as saying it's one of my favorite Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers releases and I don't necessarily see the historic value in it but uh, that's also coming from someone who is not a huge live recordings guy. Now I am a little bit more of a live jazz jazz live recording guy than I am a you know standard like rock and pop uh, live recording guy but uh, this one just again it to me there's just it didn't seem like there was and enough special to warrant releasing it with all the distortion that it had on it and it's really evident and I don't care how good of a system you have it's really noticeable really distracting and really tough to listen to um, but and I will say that again taking away the distortion it will sound it sounded better than my next one which uh, I, I if you watched my record store day vinyl haul from this year you probably saw me comment on this one and it is the Charlie Parker long lost bird live Afro Cuban Cubop recordings. And the reason why I bring it up and you know, cause there was some great musicians on here. There's Dizzy Gillespie, Milt Jackson, Art Blakey's on this one as well. You know, a bunch of great people. And you know, part of the thing is I understand on this one, especially that some of the stuff was recorded pre-1950, so I can give it a little bit of a um, pass on that. But there was one that was recorded in 1954, and, you know, I, st I know it's still kind of early, but it just, it sounded like it was recorded where there was like a pillow over the microphones, uh, or microphone, whatever it might have been. But it just seems like every, almost every single Charlie Parker I get, especially the live stuff, just sounds really bad. Uh, that one, I have to admit, sounds better than some of the other ones I've had in the past, though. But that one still does not sound good. It's just there's no high end at all. Um, you know, it's just it's very hard to to hear a lot of the instrumentation and a lot of the performance. Um, so anyways, you know, that's kind of my my thing on those. It's kind of wanted to give you guys a little heads up if you hadn't gotten any of these titles yet and you were thinking about getting them. You know, if you're into live music and the performance is more important than the sound quality to you, then by all means, you know, go for it. You know, I especially think the Charlie Parker and the B.B. King, I can understand wanting those ones because I think the performances on those ones are very good. But, um, and the B.B. King one after the first probably two or three tracks is probably okay if you can get around the fact that it says it's stereo and I don't think it is. Uh, and, uh, but anyway... You know, that's kind of my take, but, you know, if you, I'm guessing if you could find a early pressing for a first pressing of that BB King one, that would probably be a much better bet, because I'm guessing you'd have less issues than this one does, but maybe I'm wrong, and maybe you guys can let me know about that if you have an early pressing and you've experienced those same issues. So, anyway, that's my take on those releases. Stay away from live recordings from Record Store Day if they are rare and previously unreleased recordings that have never been heard before. Um because you will get burned almost every single time has been my experience. So, but I want to hear your take, you know, are those live performances more important to you to, for the historical value and the performance value than the sound quality is? 
And do you feel you can live with a really bad sound quality recording to justify listening to the performance of it? I personally can't, but that's, again, because I am just not a huge live guy. So, But I want to hear your take. Let me know how you feel. Leave your comments down below. You know, Check out my social media pages. There are uh, links to them in the description. And that is everything I have for this week. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, if you did, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. And also hit that alert bell to let you know when new videos come out. And thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you already have. And have yourself a great rest of the day and a great rest of the week.